Welcome back to Getting Bookish with Shauna and Liz. Hi! (laughs) This is our bonus episode and we are so excited. We talk about books all the time that Liz and I read, but what you guys don't know is that we talk a lot about children's books because I have four little kids. I have five-year-old twins and seven-year-old twins and we read a ton and Liz is like the children's book like queen of knowledge (laughs) and so we talk sometimes I'll I'll Marco Polo her and I'll say are these good books for kids and she's like no that girl has a nasty attitude you don't want your kids (laughs) reading those books and I'm like all right check those out so (laughs) I love the conversations we have because when I worked at the library we couldn't be that opinionated about books and so I love it when we talk because I can be like "Uh uh-uh yeah I don't need any PC I just want to know if my children should read these books. No? Okay. Um, So what we did is we kind of pulled some of our favorites. Um, We're going to go through everywhere from picture books up to about middle grade. So if you have kids in that area, um, even if you just have younger kids, some of those middle grade books are great for read-alouds to your younger kids. So maybe this will help you out with some gift ideas for Christmas. So I'm going to have Liz go first with her um, selections. All right, so I kind of grouped them together. We'll see how well this works. Yeah. (laughs) But my first recommendation are the ology books. And I just found out recently not everyone knows what these are, and they're so cool. So there's like spy ology and pirate ology, Egypt ology, and they have all this like nonfiction, real information in them, and they have pictures and illustrations, but they have like There's like tiny little books inside and there's envelopes with fun little things to take out and look at. They're very like hands on. And so they're really good for curious kids, maybe kids who don't enjoy reading as much or kids who are just really busy by nature. Mm -hmm. I think they have so much fun exploring these. They're more of like a third, fourth, fifth grade reading level, but I've seen preschoolers sit and stare at them for hours and hours. So I think that they definitely, they're a nice, I don't want to say investment because they're not expensive, but they'll they'll grow with your kids. I think kids enjoy them for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, My second recommendation, this one, I actually have one to show you. Uh, It's illustrated Harry Potter books. I need these. I need all of them. (laughs) They are so cool. So if you have kids or you know kids who are, kind of getting to the age where maybe we're going to start reading Harry Potter aloud together. This is the perfect format for read aloud. So books one through four are out in this format and it's a nice like large size. So it's good for like, we're going to sit on the couch together and read this book. Mm -hmm. And the illustrations are gorgeous. Did I see Jim K as the illustrator? Yes. Yes. Jim K is the illustrator. So good. Can we see a picture? Yes. Let's do it. Do I this one me? just just came out. I oh, know. I love this, and it seems so holiday appropriate. Oh, it's so with beautiful. the train. I know. They yeah. are. They are just. I was going to say magic, which sounds funny. I was trying to find another illustration. Ooh. Oh, that's a. Ooh, that's a good one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and I love it because sometimes you want to read that aloud to your kids and you know that they'll comprehend it, um, but showing a little bit of pictures in with it because it is a, you know, a higher level reading um, can really help out younger kids if you want to introduce them at least to the first Harry Potter book. And yes, oh, I can't wait. (laughs) So fun. So yeah, I usually recommend those. There's also, if you're doing like a Harry Potter theme this Christmas, there's a Harry Potter pop-up advent calendar. That's pretty much the coolest thing. And I feel like I need to purchase it for myself. So that exists if you're doing like a Harry Potter theme. And there's a a Harry Potter Lego advent calendar. Ooh, I saw that also. Yes. Shauna might have showed me while she was in Target. So my next recommendation are the David McCauley books. 
So he does nonfiction books and he has several different themes. One of his themes are cross sections. So like you could see the cross section of the Empire State Building or a cross section of a cruise ship. And so he has buildings and he has vehicles and all different kinds of things that look like they're just cut in half. And you can see inside oh, interesting. of them. And they're kids find them fascinating. I feel like when I was working at the library, I was having to replace them a lot because they were just constantly checked out and very, very well loved. I've never heard and of those. Yeah, they're really, really cool. And, and he also again? does, his, the author's name is David McCauley. Uh -huh. And so he has cross-section books. Like one of them is just called Buildings. Oh, I love that. Um, and then... He also does like a How Things Work series uh -huh. and there's all different kinds of things and they're just, he's very talented. He explains things in a way that's very approachable for kids, but he has like how toilets work <laughs> and I have never seen kids be more interested in a book because <laughs> it goes through like the history and it's kind of like the history of indoor plumbing. So they're learning a lot but it's on a topic that people don't talk about and kids find utterly fascinating. And so it's it. done in a nice way. Like it's not like all potty humor or anything, right. but they're really fun. So his books, they're probably, I'm going to say a fifth grade reading level. Mm -hmm. They're a more challenging reading level. But again, I see little kids just like devouring because the pictures are so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so my next suggestion, and this is... Definitely for a little bit older kids, but Robert Sabuda's pop-up books mm -hmm. are pure magic. He has like a whole series of Christmas ones that are gorgeous. He is a very talented artist. And the pop-up books, like they're not like any other pop-up books. They look like an artist designed them. Oh, wow. And he also has a series of like famous tales, like fairy tales. So there's Beauty and the Beast and there's Alice in Wonderland. Wow. And they are gorgeous. I will definitely drop some pictures of them on our Facebook page. Please you guys do, can I want to see. see what they look like. But they are incredible. Definitely for a little bit older kids because they're also very delicate. But such cool books. <laughs> <laughs> Pop ups um, for older kids. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> well, and they're long like the like the Alice in Wonderland story, it's a longer story. Oh, wow. Like, it would be too long to read aloud in one sitting. Okay. And so, and the whole story is printed in there as well. They're really... Oh, interesting. Like I said, they're just magical. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, my favorite picture books, one came out this year, and it's called Unicorn Day. Um, it's written by Diana Murray and illustrated by Luke Flowers. And it is... There are lots of kids' books that are about, like, let's be nice to everyone. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this one is really well done and not cheesy. So all it's so colorful, the book is. And there are all these unicorns celebrating Unicorn Day. <laughs> but there's a, like, imposter. And they decide to, like, take him in because it doesn't matter. Everybody can celebrate. And so it's super adorable, super colorful. If you have a child in your life that likes unicorns, I highly recommend it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it has such a sweet lesson that isn't like over, like, I'm going to show you this lesson about how to be friends with yeah. everyone. It's just a fun <laughs> story. Um, and then my other favorite pop-up, or not pop-up, my other favorite picture book maybe ever is Pout Pout Fish by <laughs> Deborah Dyson. It's such a cute book. You can have fun stories about like emotional intelligence and talking about how you feel. But the book has such great rhythm and rhyme that you're not going to mind reading it a hundred times in a row. And you know, you're going to read those picture books a hundred times in a row. Mm -hmm. And it's a really fun one. So I hugely recommend that. Um, and then I have two middle grade recommendations. The first one is The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making. It wow. could win an award for the longest title right? ever. <laughs> but it is a great book. If you have a kid who is reading much above their grade level, um, maybe they're like a third or a fourth grader, but they're reading more like middle school level. This book has a lot of challenging vocabulary in it, 
but it's still an age appropriate story Mm -hmm. for like a third grader. And, um, I really, it's really a fun adventure. And although there's a, the girls in the title, it's definitely one that both boys and girls enjoy. So my last book is the spirit animals series. The first one is written by Brandon Mole. Each book in the series is written by a pretty famous author, but they're all written by different authors. And what I really love about this is it's great for kids who maybe don't enjoy reading very much, kids who aren't readers, because as the kids are reading, they get these clues that they can then take and go online and play this game. So kids that are maybe really like screen focused (laughs) your kids who maybe they they would much rather play a video game than read a book this one kind of ties those two things together and so you have to keep reading and you have to keep finding these clues in order to keep playing your game on the computer that could be a bridge to getting them to read yeah and they're they're a fun adventure story And they definitely have a lot of boy appeal, although they're not gendered in any way. The characters are all animals. But um, they're really, really fun. And I like that kind of video game element that they bring in. So those are my recommendations. Those are the things that I recommend all the time at the bookstore. And those are, yeah, I think they would make fabulous gifts. I would like many of these if someone wanted to gift me a children's book. So <laughs> so I know that you guys read a ton. Yes. What are some of your recommendations? This was a challenge. I bet. <laughs> Only because I have so many that I wanted to share. So, um, you know, I was trying to limit myself. That was right. hard. Um, the first one, I'm just going to hold these up. This Love. is the Elephant and Piggy books, and there are 25 of them. We own all of them, and they have been read so many times. In fact, I I love these because I feel like these are the books that taught my kids how to actually read because they loved them so much that they started um, copying, like um, memorizing the words but then after memorization comes like oh I'm actually reading this story and I can read other words so these are some of our favorites I am a frog this one cracks us all up every time we read it <laughs> um should I share my ice cream and then I will take a nap these are some of our favorites but like I said we read them all the time this and they come in like a really cute set with a little um what are those book Things that go on both sides of books to hold them up. What are they called? Bookends? Bookends. <laughs> An elephant and piggy bookend. And How cute. It's so, so cute. You can usually find a deal at Barnes & Noble or do the coupon or something. Or sometimes on Amazon they'll have them for a great deal. But they are so good. My kids are, like I said, I have five-year-old twins, seven-year-old twins. And we still read them. We still read I the mess it. out of them. My next book is Adventures of Frog and Toad, and this is by Arnold Lobel. So we love this. I'm sure you've read these before or or heard of them. Yeah, it's just, it's like Frog and Toad are two little old men, and they're (laughs) they're like at each other, and it's hilarious. And for for a while, I didn't get this because I'm like, I don't know if they'll like this. And then I bought it. And we just, every night we, we were reading these stories. Uh, my next one, My Father's Dragon. And I love this one. We read through this so fast because they kept saying, can we read more? Can we read more? And then like after lunch, can we read some more of this? And this is actually three stories in one. Um, this is My Father's Dragon, Elmer and the Dragon, and the Dragons of Blue Land. There's only three, so this is all three. And there's some pictures in here. It's basically about a little boy who saves a dragon, and then together they have these little adventures. And it's a baby dragon, and it is, like, the cutest. Um, It's, like, 50 years old. Like, the little circle on here says celebrating 50 years in print. So it's an older book, but it's fantastic. It's so good. 
the next one, I feel like these are just, everybody should have these books. Yes. Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne. And I mean, I don't really have to say much about this. It's just so cute. And if you are an audiobook fan, you have to, even if you're not, get this on audiobook, but it has to be narrated by Peter Dennis because you will not, you will not regret it. It is so good. He does all the voices. Um, he's just fantastic. I love it. We like reading it. We love listening to him. In fact, when I read it, they're like, you're not doing Piglet's voice right. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, sorry. <laughs> um, my next two books are both by Ben Hatke. And so we have Julia's House for Lost Creatures. These are adorable picture books. And then, so all these creatures visit her house. They make a mess. And she basically makes them a chore chart <laughs> to help her <laughs> clean up the house. <laughs> but my kids are always like, I'm the ghost. I'm the mermaid. I'm the fairy. And it's just so cute. Um, I love it. This one is Nobody Likes a Goblin. We read this one a ton also. Um, this little goblin gets chased out of his little cave and he's trying to like rescue his friend. So we love those two books. Those are like two of our favorite, favorite picture books. Um, the next one. So if you're looking for, I feel like everybody needs to own a classic fairy tale book with, you know, Little Red Riding Hood and Snow White and all of those. This is my favorite. It's a little ripped up. I don't know if you can see that. It's like, it's just a, a very, little love. It's very well loved. <laughs> this particular one. So we have a couple, a couple of them, but I love this one, and it's it's illustrated by Scott Gustafson. I think his illustrations are so beautiful, which is why this one is our favorite. So I marked some pages just to show you really quick some of my favorite illustrations. So this one is Goldilocks and the Three Bears. If you can see that. Can you That's see beautiful. it? Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Um, he, my microphone's in the way, so. Um, they're just so good. Look at this one. I almost want to take apart the book and like frame the pictures. Oh, Snow White. Yeah, so it's, it's like a full, there's full page spreads of the pictures and the, oh, it's just so great. Can you guess that one? Oh, Hansel and Gretel. That's so cute. Aren't they adorable? Yes. Oh my goodness. They're so cute. So this one is our favorite for classic fairy tales. Next um, is the Mercy Watson series. These are by Kate DiCamillo, who wrote Because of Winn-Dixie, Tale of Despero, and... This is about a family who owns a pig named Mercy Watson. There's, I think there's six of them. I could only find three. I think my daughter sleeps with the other ones. Um, <laughs> Princess in Disguise. This one is Mercy Watson Fights Crime. And Mercy Watson to the Rescue. So <laughs> it's just, you know, the pig gets into mischief. And they kind of treat her like a family member. My daughter, who is seven... She reads these perfectly fine, um, but then she likes me to read to, a, to her as well. But you can tell it's just... Real it's, adorable illustrations. Yeah. The next one, now this, this particular series has a lot. Well, I don't know if it's a series. Ella, Bella, Ballerina, and Cinderella. Have you heard of these? I haven't. So there is Ella Bella, Cinderella, Swan Lake, Sleeping Beauty, Magic Toy Shop, Midsummer Night's Dream, and Nutcracker. And it's all about this little Ella Bella character who goes to dance class and then she enters the fairy tale. And of course, they're all centered around um, ballets. My, our favorite is the Swan Lake book. Um, and so she enters into the fairy tale and helps out the main character in some way. And in the back of the book, they give you um, some information about the actual ballet. So it, it tells who wrote the ballet and just some. So if you, if you have a dancer in your life that would like some more information on that. 
it's just really cool. I like any book that gives me a little bit of actual information. Yeah. The next one is Claire and the Unicorn. Cute. I had to have a unicorn book. <laughs> um, we have so many. So this is by B.G. Hennessy. This is about a little girl named Claire who falls asleep and then her and her unicorn Capricorn um, go on an adventure and they find out what it means to be, you know, to have your story end happily ever after. Like how, what does that mean for you? And then it has cute little illustrations. It's just, Aww. and she visits different like, princesses like I think she visits princess in the pea and she visits little fairy lands how but sweet the pictures are great and is um, that her and her dad at the beginning yeah so her dad her dad's reading her fairy tales at night and then she, she says I think she asked him well what does happy ever after mean and he says I don't know you should think about that and you know See if you can come up with with a with why, and she's like, okay. She drifts off to sleep, and then she rides her magical Wee. unicorn to find out why. Right, I so, love when picture books feature dad. Yeah, because I feel like most picture books feature mom. So that's why I was asking. I was like, oh, good. No, I think that's I see a, dad. That's a good <laughs> catch, and it is something to kind of, you know, I should have um, mentioned that because, yeah, you're right. Most books feature mom, and this would be a great book to to introduce, you know. Be And it would be so cute to have dad read it out loud. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my final pick. I know I kind of okay. went over my allotment, but I just couldn't wow. help it. And then I snuck in extra because I had series in there. <laughs> um, my last one, so this is a little odd, but <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm holding up like a million heavy books. Okay, these no, these are my illustrated versions of classics, but they are illustrated by Ro Robert Ingpen, who I am obsessed with his illustrations. So I have. Um, I'll show you some of my favorites. My number one, if you're if you're looking to get one, I my number one I would recommend is. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. And like I said, the illustrator is Robert Ingpen. They're just so good. He actually has a slightly creepy style to his illustrations. <laughs> They're beautiful, but they have kind of... Um, that is Dorothy with the Witch of the North. Right. But I just think that they're kind of haunting and beautiful this is when they're trying to you know make it over that little um like the ravine yeah the ravine so they're trying to get across so there's like full page and it's it's not an abridged version so this is the full version of the book and it's just so beautiful i love it so that one is what i would recommend if you wanted to just start out with one uh we've read that a couple times um, the other one I have is Alice's Adventure, Adventures in Wonderland. Look at the back. I love Alice. <laughs> I know. And then I love, this is a picture with the caterpillar. Oh. But yeah, these illustrations are just fantastic. I also have the Jungle Book. Um, I mean, look at the back of that. Isn't that so good? Gorgeous. The yes. pictures in here. This is with the giant snake. So it's you can see he almost has like this raw quality to his drawings. Yeah. And then I have Pinocchio. And we have Geppetto on the back there. Wow. And these are so just, intricate. It is. Like it really is. And this is after um Pinocchio put his feet on a warmer and then it burned his feet off. <laughs> Poor Pinocchio. <laughs> I have to say, this is quite a scary story. <laughs> it is. It is. I was just going to ask if you had read it aloud to your kids yet. I haven't read it out loud, but um, 
I I was reading some of it and I was like, we're going to wait a little bit on that one. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit of a scarier <laughs> one. <laughs> There's a lot yeah. of lesson yeah. that happens. In the For sure. Story. It's not quite like the Disney movie. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> All right. So those are my uh, recommendations. And I think any of these would be a good choice for those special kids in your life. And yes. if you if you guys as the listeners have any must reads for children about this age from little kids up to like middle grade readers, please visit us on our Facebook page, Getting Bookish, and let us know. Um, we'll make a post mm -hmm. about the children's books. So just look for that post and add yeah, them. Yeah, and if them. you have like specific requests too, I know that sometimes people, I mean, they come in the bookstore all the time. So I feel very practiced, but <laughs> But if you're like, oh, I don't know what to gift my grandson who likes this, I'm sure yeah. we can come up with lots of books that we've read this year that we can <laughs> make some recommendations for you. Oh, absolutely. We would love to do that. So come over, Getting Bookish on Facebook, join us, and um, we will see you next time on our next podcast. Yeah. Everybody, have fun. Be safe out there on Black Friday, please. Oh, <laughs> scary place to be. <laughs> And enjoy your holidays with your friends and family, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Bye.